people can do that for sure. I mean, you can start out and you can sort of dumb it down and, and, and get through that way. But I noticed like with my podcast, so intermittently I have a podcast called The Lift and I feature mm -hmm. speakers, authors, and um, you know, noteworthy people. And so I have this rolling animation that um, opens the show for about 30 seconds. And mm -hmm. it's made up of various clips of all my former guests that were on the show um, with little moments and music and it's a high energy, you know? So um, I have that created. Then the producer also will write in the name and title of the person being interviewed. Yep. And then you can decide like with, with Restream or other platforms, how, what color do you want the font? Um, you know, what design do you want? Do you want to put your company logo in there? And so you can get super creative and be your own TV station. It's so much fun. Oh, I yes. Like yes. more hours in the day to do this because it's so much fun. <laughs> well, that's where you and I have lived. And now yeah. the tools are there to help us live yeah. there again, even in our own home studios. And it's only getting better and better. And that's why I, I wanted to do a deep dive on the producer role because more people are going to run into the fact you're juggling apples and oranges and everything now as a host. You don't need to do that. Get a teammate. It's true. Get someone that understands who you are, what you want to achieve, and let them run the show so you can be here. It's such a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver and a luxury um, because you know how it is with people doing podcasts that a lot of people are not monetizing it. So it's, yes. it's sort of like you have to put your time in and you have to put your shows in and you have to also be very dedicated because you can't just decide to do, you know, three shows and then quit, you know, you should put a lot of, a lot of shows in the can so that you can roll them out uh, successfully, but you, you, it takes a while to get that momentum. Minimum of 10 shows in the can before you launch, because you want to have that bank. Again, that's when your producer is going to come in because you're hosting, you're the, the personality needs to be swirling and moving and active. The producer needs to be engineering, designing and crafting. And then have it all, all come together. But yeah, get 10 in the can so you can keep the engine going. It's so much easier. Um, by the way, anybody, if you've got any questions tonight, drop them in the chat. Let us know. Uh, we would love to hear those. Of course, if you're here with us virtually, raise your digital hand. We'll bring you on camera. Let us join the conversation here tonight in the National Speakers Association. Where do you think producer roles are going, Pat? As this continues to evolve, as we get more restreams and other platforms, and we can I mean, right now we can multiple stream, we can add in people, we can turn people off, bring people in. How far does the producer will go as we bring out the new virtual stage further and further? Oh, I mean, you know, it's like, I think there's going to just be a lot more people getting into it. You know, I think um, it's there's going to be a glut. There's going to be a glut of information. There's already a glut now, but it's, it's just going to continue, I think, um, because the tools are so easy to use. And also, I think people are just going to realize that you know, there is real money to be made in this. It, it, what value are you offering, you know? And so that's important thing to think about too. And when you have a producer, you can really sort of hone in on what is the value that I want to provide to my targeted audience. So one of the other things that a producer does is after the show uh, would repurpose, uh, let's say a 15 minute podcast into what? One minute clips, 30 second clips, and then feed those out to social and then um, get some more traction that way. So, you know, we'll, we'll do those like little sexy teaser bites. So you could just tease all the little fine moments of, of your podcast to get people to watch the whole thing. And if you do have, um, you know, hopefully you're offering value because otherwise you, you wouldn't, uh, you know, you, your audience might not appear, but mm -hmm. once you offer value and you, and you share knowledge, and if, if someone's really interested in that, they'll go to the full uh, podcast because they trust you and they say, you know, this person knows what they're talking about. So that brings up another great point. As a host, you may remember a quote, but you can't remember where in the show it was. Your producer is probably going to write it down, sometimes digitally mark it. They're going to grab that soundbite in the moment in some way and say, we're going back to that host show. Oh, yeah. Host should not be thinking about that. That's where your producer should be thinking about that, right? <laughs> I feel like a split personality because that's what it, when I, when I'm interviewing someone, I'm like, Oh, that's it. The bite. I, I can, I can know, you know, notice it right away because, you know, we're trained like that. Right. Yes. So um, absolutely. And, and uh, producers will also hear things that the host won't hear because the host might be concentrating on 
for example, having a good rapport with the camera, you know, and so there, there's all kinds of things that come into play. You know, your mind goes into a million places, but, um, you know, the host's mind and the producer's mind could be, you know, thinking about two different things.